Shalom, Yasha Allah, Shalom, Shalom, Kala Yahaw, Shabbat Shalom, Mashiach, Malak Yahushai, Barbara Kakadash, and Tazawan Kabak, the Bayam Squam, Wah, Kam Yasha Allah, I have a thumb, I can't for Akwa. Amen. We back at it with another video. Through the spirit of Prophet Yahaw, Bashem Yahushai, Sarak Series, chapter 24. Let's get straight into it. It says, Wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. In the congregation of the Most High shall she open her mouth and triumph before his power. I came out of the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a cloud. I dwell in high places and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. At the end of the day, wisdom is going to do its own thing. You understand that? So you don't have to do uh, so much. Like the scriptures say, uh, 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 you know, wisdom is going to make your face to shine. Uh, let's see if I can get that precept. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 1. Who is the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. It says, make us his face to uh, so like it, make us his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. You understand that? So wisdom is gonna boast yourself, right? Wisdom is what's gonna lift men and women up, right? Not yourselves. Wisdom do it herself. You understand that? So you don't have to, you know, you know, it is going, it's gonna happen regardless, man. You understand that? That's just how it goes. Uh, let's read on the Sirach twenty four. Let's read on in Sirach 24, right? It says, um, it says, I alone, right? It says, it's like it. it says, I alone come past the circuit of heaven and walked in the bottom of the deep, right? What is that talking about? Let's go to that precept in Genesis 1, right? Uh, Genesis chapter 1. And verse number, uh, I think it's six, where it says the spirit of God was on the face. All right, so like it, Genesis one. read from the top it says in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and here it is right here and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters right the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters in genesis 1 right and what does sirach 24 just say it says i alone can pass the circuit of heaven which is the firmament and walked in the bottom of the deep meaning wisdom is everywhere you understand that wisdom is everywhere so there's nowhere that you can't find it you understand that chiefly is in a chiefly is in the law, right? It's in the scriptures. But you know what I'm saying? There's nowhere that you can't find wisdom, right? Uh let's read on. It says, um, it says, uh, with all these I sought rest, and in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he made me so like and he made me caused my tabernacle to rest. And said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thy inheritance in Israel. Right? Because we're the only people that really got the understanding of the Most High God. Let's get that precept in the book of Psalm. Right? Because wisdom is with us. It's not with nobody else. So any kind of wisdom or when you talk, when you're reading the scriptures and it says, Esau's a so-called wise man. That's only pertaining to his blessing with the sword and the wisdom of this world, obviously. Because the world is his. You understand? That's only talking about the wisdom of this world. But the spiritual wisdom and the understanding of the Most High God, the wisdom of everlasting, right? The actual wisdom that we want in these last days, right? We the only people that actually got that or can actually obtain that or can acquire that. You follow? This is the book of Psalm chapter 50 and verse 16. That goes to show you like no Edomite can ever be righteous, man. Right? So any person that can actually try their best to be righteous in these last days is an Israelite without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, that's, that, that proves that. This is Psalm chapter 50 verse 16. 
But unto the wicked God saith, What has thou to what's like it? What has thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. You understand that? So other nations they hate instructions and they cast the most high's words behind them because they don't understand the wisdom that comes out of it. You understand that? They can't break down these things and keep the commandments. Uh let's read on it's Sirach 24. Okay? It says, um, uh, verse number nine, he created me from the beginning before the world. We just read that in Genesis one. He created me from the beginning before the world. It says, and I shall never fail in the holy tabernacle. I served before him. And so was I established in Zion, right? Wisdom is established in Zion, right? Uh, likewise in the beloved city, he gave me rest. And Jerusalem was my power, and I took root in an honorable people, even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. Man, this is why I low-key like uh, screen recording, because I want to pull up the definition of honorable, right? Because we're supposed to be an honorable people, and all of this is tying in with wisdom, where this wisdom is coming from. Why are we, why are we so wise? Why are we are able to be so wise? You understand that? Because we're an honorable people. I wish I could pull up the definition of honorable, man, because that'll help you understand really, like, who we are, really, well, you know, where we coming from. You understand that? Um, let's read on. And it's Sirach chapter 24 and verse number, right, because the Lord said honorable people, man. Right, honorable people. Uh, let's read on. And verse number 13. I was exalted like a cedar in Le uh, it says Lebanon and as a, a, a cypress tree upon the mountains of Haran. I, I uh, right, these are the trees that the Most High compared wisdom to. You understand that? That's what he compared wisdom to. Right, that's what that's what we are like in these last days. Wisdom is exalted upon these high trees. And I did a video about learning from a tree. <laughs> so I don't need to get too in depth about these about these trees. <laughs> right? People probably think I'm crazy. I make lessons off of trees. Anyways, let's read on. Sirach chapter 24, verse uh 14. It says, I was exalted. Like a palm tree in in Gadi and in, in Gadi, as a as a rose plant in Jericho, as in as in fair olive tree, in a pleasant field, and grew up as a plant tree by the water. Right. Let's read on. It says. It says by a plant tree by the water, and then it says I gave a sweet. I gave a sweet smell like cinnamon and asphaltus and I yielded it says as asphaltus and I yielded a pleasant odor like the best myrrh and galabanum And onyx, a sweet storax. Storax. And as the fume of frankincense in the tabernacle, right? Because the tabernacle is smelling like frankincense, and these all these perfumes and you know smells. It's pleasant smells that wisdom comes with. Meaning, you understand that? Meaning, wisdom is with the most pleasant things. I mean, it's set apart. You understand that? That's what the Most High uses to, to, to make you righteous. Wisdom. All right? Uh, let's read on. It says, as the, it's not done. As the turnip tea tree. I stretch out my branches and 
my branches are the branches of honor and grace, right? It says, as the vine brought I forth pleasant savior, and my flowers are the fruit of honor and riches. I am the mother of fair love and fear and knowledge and holy hope. I therefore being eternal am given to all my children which are named of him. Come unto me, all ye that be desirous of me, and fill yourselves with my fruits. You understand that? Because when you're desirous of wisdom, desirous of anything righteous, you will be fruit. You will you will be filled. You know what I'm saying? With that wisdom and stuff. You follow? Because it's fruit. And that's where, actually where you get your fruit from. Right? When you get your fruit of the spirit, it actually comes from wisdom. Right? It says you're going to be filled with her fruits. It says... For my memorial, for my memorial is sweeter than honey, and my inheritance. It says, it's lucky, it's sweeter than honey. It says, and my inheritance than the honeycomb. Right? Wisdom is not compared to hot fructose corn syrup. Right? Wisdom is compared to a hundred percent pure cane sugar. Right? A pure cane brown sugar. Right? That's wisdom. Right? Not hot fructose corn syrup, the throw-off stuff that you get from the damn dollar store, man. You understand that? Wisdom is set apart amongst the most cheapest things. Right? And that's what you really want to chase after. And at the end of the day, this is your wife that we're describing. She smell good. She look good. She set apart. She don't disobey the most high God. She she with the most high God. That's your wife right there, man. You understand that? That's your mother. That's your sister. You follow? Um, let's read on. It says, He that obeyeth me shall never be confounded and they that work by me shall not do amiss it says all these uh, it says all these things are the book of the covenant of the most high god even the law which moses commanded for an inheritance unto for an inheritance unto Shalabia. it says commanded for an inheritance unto the congregations of jacob Right, so even the things that we're reading in Cyrac, even the things that we are reading in Cyrac, right, these things are to be taken just like you're reading the Torah, right? Of course, the Torah is going to have, you know, a little bit more uh, substantiation over Cyrac and stuff, but these are commandments as well, right? These are not laws, but these are commandments. And in the Torah, it tells you to follow the commandments. You understand that? So you have to follow, right, and, uh, uh, you know, try your best to fulfill these things that we read about and Sirach, Baruch, whatever it may be, because these are commandments. So you might be listening to something that we're, because we're reading along, right? We're just reading the book of Sirach together, right? We're reading along together and we're reading through it. You got to follow these things as well, right? Just like you keep the law, you have to keep these things too, right? Let's, follow, let's read on. It says, um, it's for inheritance to Jacob. It says, faint not to be strong in the Lord, that he may confirm you. It says, cleave unto him for him, for like for in him there is no other savior, right? There's no other savior than Yahweh Shem Yahushua, right? That's Baruch, the sixth chapter. It says, he filleth all things with his wisdom. And Phison and Tigris in the, in the time of new fruits, right? It says, he maketh the understanding to abound like the Euphrates and as Jordan in the time of the harvest. He maketh the doctrine of knowledge appear as the light and as Gion in the time of vintage. Right? Because when you shine a light in a dark room, it has a, you can't set a light upon a hill. Right? You set a light upon a hill. Right? You don't put it under a bushel, under, under a bushel, right? Or a fig tree, right? A light is is to be seen. Right? Right now it's daytime and it's cloudy. The sun is behind these clouds, but at the end of the day, it's still light everywhere. Because that sun is symbolic to the Most High's wisdom. It can be cloudy. It can be demons. It can be whatever. At the end of the day, the Most High's wisdom is going to prevail, man. You understand that? That's that's the, that's, the, that's what the scriptures is talking about. Because you can't you can't you can't you can't hide it, right? These words are true. It says, um, "The first man knew her not perfectly. No more." Shall the last find her out? Because the first man, right, that the Most High God chose would be Adam. He didn't know it perfectly because he still rebelled against wisdom. 
rebelled against the, rebelled against God's commandments. And the last man before Yahweh Shai, right? Whoever it is in these last days, it's not going to work out because we're grew up in this corruptible society since the time of Adam and Eve. You understand that? So let's read on. Right? And chiefly, they're going to be destroyed. It says, um. It says, um, for verse, verse uh, 29, for her thoughts are more than the sea and her counsels profounder than the great deep. I also came out of a book from a river and as conduit into a garden, I said, I will water my best garden. And will water abundantly my garden bed. And lo, my brook become as a river, and my river became as a sea. I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning, and will send forth her light afar off. Right? Because when wisdom is talking about she's going to water her brook, that's talking about watering and giving us in these last days the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because when you go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, it tells you that the Most High's doctrine drops as the rain. You understand that? And we are the Lord's garden, right? We are the Lord's vineyard, right? When you go to the book of uh, Song of Solomon, the fifth chapter, you understand that? So being what that meaning is, hey, in these last days, wisdom is coming, right? The books are open. It's just up to you to actually go and find these things out. It's not by chance that the Most High allowed us to have technology, the most high allowed us to have certain things to us to be libraries you understand that for us to actually go out and get information because information is available right wisdom is available these things are available for us to go and get right and wisdom is pouring it out right and rivers is going to become seas right you might start off at a certain level and you're growing to become more you understand that that's what it means when wisdom is pouring out you know what i'm saying you got a garden you got your little flower pot, you know what I'm saying, with a little handle, and then it got your, you know, your thing with the nozzle on it. You're pouring that out, right? That helps your, um, that helps your, your crops and your garden grow. You understand that? You need that water, and that's how we need wisdom. If you don't give a plant or a flower water, it's going to shrivel up and die and <laughs> kind of, you know, not, it's going to uh, uh, perish, right? Um, let's read on. It says, Sarah 24. In verse uh, number 34 it says behold that I have not labored for myself only I've not labored for myself only but for all of them that seek wisdom right so you don't you don't labor for yourself you don't go out and teach just you don't always do that for your damn self you shouldn't have a mindset like yeah I gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta get these sins off I gotta get these sins off right you're not laboring for yourself you're laboring for all those that seek wisdom the most high gave you wisdom to share right like you have talents those talent talents are made to be shared are made to be uh spread out you understand that and that's how wisdom gets down wisdom is selfless right you got to be selfless with the wisdom you get from the most high god right and with that shalom Allah, shalom shalom we're gonna have another part after this most high willing shalom 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 call all you by shalom 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 Wherever Kakadash, I tell someone I'm going to buy him his coin. Why? Come in, Sha'Allah, how about them? I can walk with. Amen. This is a part two to the video. I'm going to put it all in one video so, you know, the edification can just go smoothly through. Most high willing, brothers and sisters, is edified. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like this style of video, I'm going to edit it a little bit, chop it up. You know what I'm saying? Throw some stuff in there. Most high willing is smooth. Brothers and sisters like it. Uh, but this Cyrex series, uh, chapter 25, let's get straight into it. Um, it says, in three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful before, it says, stood up beautiful, both before God and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and wife that agree together, man. Right? And this is beautiful between the Most High and men, right? Because men and women, we like it when you see a marriage, when you see a couple, they agree together, they love each other. You understand that? We love to see these things, right? We love to see Hebrew love, <laughs> all right? Let's get the precept. Let's get the classic precept in Psalm uh, 133 and 1, right? Psalm 133 and verse number 1 says, 
It says, Behold, how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to, to, well, to, to dwell together in unity. You understand that? And this is the definition of unity. Now, with unity, you got to understand that's just that's being a unit, right? That's being one body. Just like your, your wife, right? A man and a woman, when they're married, y'all are one flesh. You understand that? And you're dwelling in one flesh. You're dwelling in unity. That's beautiful before the Most High God, right? Just because you might have a disagreement with a different brother, a uh, disagreement with a different sister in terms of doctrine or whatever it may be, that don't mean you're not in unity. You understand that? Brotherly love, sisterly love, uh, husband and wife love concludes unity. You understand that? Communication and understanding of each other uh, concludes unity. You follow? Verse 2. It says, three sorts of men my soul hated. This is just balance. Right? It's beautiful when brothers and sisters can come together and dwell in unity. But guess what? Three sorts of men my soul hated. And I am greatly offended at their life. A poor man that is proud, a rich man that is a liar, and an old adulterer that doeth. Because remember, in the verse, in the chapter before, I mean, in chapter twenty-three, it talked about how all, uh, all, 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 um, all bread is sweet to a whoremonger, right? The Lord hate an old adulterer, right? You just old, burning in your lust. You're too old for that, man. Right? That's for young men, right? I had, um, I had men that's older than me. They came to me and they told me, "Listen, you young." You like the chase. You understand that? You like the chase. All right? You see women. You get something new. You talk to the new sister. Whatever, whatever. You like to chase. All young men like to chase, man. It is what it is. We like to hunt. It is what it is. You follow? That's young men and situations and demons that young men deal with. Not old men. You're old. You're supposed to be chilling on your throne. Right? Relaxed. You're supposed to, all the, you're supposed to have already had your family. You follow? That's what we're doing. It says, if thou haste, it's like, if thou hast uh, gathered nothing in thy youth, how canst thou find anything in thy age? Right, because if you couldn't find a woman in your youth, you couldn't do it in your youth, how much harder is it when you of old? If you couldn't find your job when you was in your youth, how much harder is it when you already 30? You understand that? Or you, you, you're 30, you're still in your youth, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect. But at the end of the day, when you in your youth, that's your prime time to really be going out and to be going to get it, right? Because when you get old, that's when, you know, that's when you, you kind of you kind of pushing the limit. You follow? Right? It says, um, it says, how comely a thing is judgment for gray hairs and for ancient men to know counsel, right? Because you want your men, right? Your grown men to know counsel, to know how to uh, receive advice, give advice, wise counsel in these things. You understand that? That's really what you want. Let's get a precept in uh, Titus chapter 3. Right, Titus uh, chapter 2, I mean. It says, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. And I think every single last thing that we didn't talk about, every single last thing that we didn't went over in Cyrac is sound doctrine. To a T, right? Come here. Come here. Come here. Yasha, come here. Come here. Sit. Sit. Chill out. Right. Yasha, sit. 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 Right, what's we doing? Um, it says all these things are good doctrine, right? It says uh, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and patience. Now let's break this down because this is going hand in hand with exactly what Sirach is saying. You understand? It says that the aged men, right? Because once you pass your youth, and you're an aged man, right? Once you pass your youth and you're an aged man, it says, uh, let them be sober. Meaning like, okay, you, you have your good time, right? You get together with your guys, you have your good time, but you're not just a drunkard. You're not always just all over the place, right? Right. And some men, you got to check yourself with that. You're a grown-ass man, and you get drunk every weekend. 
You're a grown-ass man, and you just can't stay sober. You understand that? Every time you get a single opportunity, you're trying to get high. You're trying to get drunk. You're too old for that, man. Because our people don't understand that that stuff weighs on your brain. People that, you know, that just get dumb-ass high every day, every weekend, this stuff weighs on your brain, man. Literally, you know, the way you were created naturally is, is perfectly fine. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with having a good time, but you got to understand, when you drink and when you're smoking, this stuff does stuff to your damn brain. Stop thinking that that temporary pleasure that you just get and it don't really have no recompense afterward, that you just okay. That's not how it goes, man. You understand? That's not how it goes. When you're smoking every day and you're getting high, you're getting high, you're getting high, you're getting high, overdoing it, this stuff weighs on your brain. That's how people end up with mental diseases and sicknesses. It has symptoms, man. Because the way you were created naturally is perfectly fine. Right? The Lord said in Ecclesiastes 12 and 9, He hath made man upright, but they seek out vain inventions. Follow? Let's read on. Right? So you got to be sober. Right? And then it says grave. And then it says temperate. Right? Grave meaning you down to the ground, you lowly, you humble. Right? Temperate meaning you're not always on edge. Here it is. You're a grown-ass man. You're playing basketball with some youngins. Basketball with some youngins. Right? And you getting all temperate. You get more mad than the young men. But really, you're supposed to be the one busting everybody behind, right? Telling the young men to calm down and how the young men to act. But nowadays, it's backward, right? You got to tell the old man to relax. Oh, chill, old head, chill, old head, <laughs> right? That's how it is nowadays. You understand? And then it says, um, um, it says temperate, sound in faith. Right, sound and faith meaning like you rooted and grounded. You're not just being tossed to and fro. Then it says in charity, because once you have of age, you're supposed to have what you're supposed to have, so you can go ahead and knock it off and say, do your thing. Charity. All right. And then it says in patience. You understand that? So let's go back to Cyrac 25. All right, and this is sound doctrine, man. This is sound doctrine. Let's go back to it in Cyrac 25 and verse number four. How, oh, how comely a thing is judgment. Oh, verse 5. Oh, how comely is the wisdom of old men and understanding and counsel to men of honor. All right? It says, much experience is the crown of old men and the fear of God is their glory. All right? So much experience is the crown of old men. Many of you have been to and fro in his life. You'd have been in different decades, different time periods. You didn't seen all of these things. And this is the crown of your glory. All right? Because when you're a young man like me, you can come tell me, listen, don't hit, don't even go ahead and buy that. You know what I'm saying? Wait a couple months, flip that, go ahead and, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and buy it. Right? I, I love when old men instruct me in, in unrighteous ways, man. Because you got to love reproof. You got to love instruction. Because really, what you, you got to understand this. When you have somebody that's telling you the right way to go and to not go this way, they, they're literally forming your path to not have no mistakes. Nobody wants to make mistakes. Nobody wants stress in their life. You understand that? So when you have an aged man or aged woman that's helping you and instructing you, like your parents, man. That's why the Lord tells you to honor your parents. Right? You have an aged man or an aged woman that can instruct you in the righteous ways. You have to take heed to these things. Right? I love my parents with everything in my heart. You understand? That's my family. Right, and the way they raised me, I raised my siblings, is 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 a hundred percent the best uh, um, in my in my um in my uh in my in my thought in my um uh, in my view. You understand that? But let's read on. It says, um, "There is there be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter out my tongue. A man that hath joy of his children." And he that lives to see the fall of his enemy. He's a beautiful thing. Well is him that dwelleth with a wife of understanding. Not just dwell with a wife, with a wife of understanding. It says, and that hath not slipped with his tongue. And that hath not served a man more unworthy than himself, man. You understand that? So it's blessed as that man that can live in a household with his wife. He know how to treat his wife. Right, in all manner of love, peace, you know what I'm saying, tranquility, right? Not too many arguments, even though it pops up, you know what I'm saying? Blessed is that man that can actually do that, right? And he don't have to be raised under a man 
or had to live in a, you know what I'm saying, getting a little, getting a little roommate situation, right? <laughs> that damn roommate spirit. You understand that? Kind of want to flee from these things. You know what I'm saying? It's not wrong having a roommate situation, but to a certain extent, to be a real man of the Lord, you want to have your own little thing going on. You follow? Let's read on. It says, um, well is him that hath found prudence, and he that speaketh in the ears of them that will hear. How great is he that findeth wisdom, yet is there none above him that feareth the Lord. Because, remember, uh, fearing the Lord is wisdom. Because that's what helps you choose right from wrong, right? Wisdom is choosing right from wrong, and the fear of the Lord is going to always have you choose right. Simple. Let's read on. It says, um, uh, but the love of the Lord passeth all things for illumination, right? For illumination, right? It says, it says, illumination. 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 It says, he that holdeth it, whereto he shall be likened. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love. And that faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. Because with faith, you understand that, like, nothing is going to be possible without the Most High God. Because the Most High God is in charge of your mindset for you to go and give it. The Most High God is in charge of your mindset for you not to be able to go and get it, but to lose 50-fold. You understand that? Let's read on. It says, uh, give me any plague, but the plague of the heart. And any wickedness, but the wickedness of a woman, right? So like I just said, you want any plague, but the plague of the heart, right? What does that mean? Let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. Let's go to First Thessalonians. All right. Let's go to... Um, Right, so I can um, on First Thessalonians chapter two, should I be? Okay, one second. Right, let's go to chapter one. Right, you want any plague but the plague of the heart. You follow? Uh, this is Romans chapter one and verse number twenty-eight. All right, it says. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, right? Because that's how you get a plague of the heart, but not fearing the Lord. You understand that? And now you have a plague in your heart. A plague in your heart is like a mindset that's just corrupt. You understand that? Or a thought process, a way of living that's just corrupt, right? So when you don't retain God in your knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that which are not convenient, right? Because you got a person and you just wonder why I don't understand nothing that they do. Or you got a person and you just don't understand why they, you don't, like, what are you doing, right? That person that you just got is like, what are you doing, right? Why do you do that? Why, why do you think like that, right? That's a reprobated mind. You understand that? Because they don't want to fear the Lord. They don't want to retain God in their knowledge. That's how you stay away from it. I like a guaranteed way to stay away from it. A guaranteed way to stay away from a reprobated mind is to keep the fear of the Lord in your in your mind, right? All right. So it says, Sirach chapter twenty five. It says, um, right. So I'm gonna read that again. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart, and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman, because the wickedness of a woman is gonna have you drive yourself crazy. Because women don't make no sense. You understand that? It says. And any affliction, but the affliction 
It says, any affliction but the affliction from them that hate me. And any revenge but the revenge of my enemies. You understand that? Because what this is going to is when a person is fully persuaded in their own mind to do wrong, to do wickedness, there's no turning them back. Right? That's why you don't want that reprobated mind because there's no turning back. Your mind is reprobated. Now, your mind, you're doing what you think is right. But in totality, it's wrong. A woman, she's wicked. She's doing the things that she think is right, right, based off of her emotions or however it may go. She thinks those things are right, right, and she it, it, it's not going to add up, right? Your enemies, they're going to want to revenge you because they got so much anger and hatred stored up in their mind. You understand that? What this is going into, once you have your mind set on a certain way, you get into dangerous situations, man. All right, let's read on. It says, um, there is no head above the head of a serpent and there is no wrath above the wrath of an, en of an enemy like i just said once your mind is fully convinced to do something wrong or fully convinced to do something evil man your head is not the lord right your head is then just just your own self right your god is your belly and you then become an enemy to the lord because you rather you chose yourself over the ways of the lord right which was right that's how we talk to you who are you talking to? Cut it out. Move. Move. You see me teaching. Move. Move. All right. Let's read on. Move. Let's read on. It says. All right. Let's read on. It says, um, I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face and darkeneth her countenance, countenance like sackcloth. Right, so a wicked woman is something that you don't want to get yourself involved into because it's going to make yourself go, you know, be stressed out, be mad, you know, and be, you know, everything. Because you'd rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than with a wicked woman. A lion and a dragon might be calm, then it might pop off, and you can control it. Right, a dragon is going to spit out fire, all these other things. But there's agents to where so you can control it. A wicked woman, you're dealing with another human being that you is sometimes you may not be able to control it. Right? You have to weigh it out like a spiritual man and let the Lord deal with it. You follow? All right? So you rather dwell with that than a wicked woman. Right? Because a wicked woman will drive your ass crazy. It says, um... It says, the wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth, right? Your countenance is your is your uh your physical expression, right? Your countenance is your um what do they call it? Your um right, your, 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 you know your 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 face, your attitude, and all these other things. You understand that? This is your countenance. And then it says, um, her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly, right? I'm like, oh, snap, here, go, here, here come she go again, right? Oh, here she come again. You understand that? Here she come again. You don't want to deal with it. You want to get it over with. Here we go again, right? Oh, man, right? No man wants to deal with that, but that's a wicked woman. That's a sign that that brother got a wicked woman, or that's a sign that that sister is a wicked woman, right? It says, um, uh, it says all wickedness is but, it says all wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her, as the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the aged. So is a wife full of words to a quiet man. Let's read that again. As the climbing up of as the climbing up a sandy way is the is to the feet of the aged. Meaning, if you have a sand mountain and you have an old man, him climbing up that mountain. He's not going to be going anywhere, right? He, you got a mountain, and it's full of slant sand. He's going to walk up on the mountain like this, right? And then after 15 hours, he might go like this. And <laughs> you're going to stay right there. You're not getting anywhere, right? And then it says, and then it says, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. A quiet man meaning a man who who who, who is trying to communicate or a man who can't communicate because his wife is full of words. This conversation is getting nowhere. And it's like an old man trying to get up a soundy mountain. It's not going nowhere. Right? The words are just coming out. The words are just coming out. And the man, the brother, is going to sit there like this. Like, everybody has seen that. Right? Your woman yelling at you. 
and their brother's sitting there like this. Right? Everybody didn't seen that. Right? It says, stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire not desire her not for her pleasure. Because that's a key to how the, that's a key to how these things happen. It says a woman is the a woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. A wicked woman abateth the cords, maketh a heavy countenance and a wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress maketh weak hands and feeble knees. Right? Because a woman is made as a help me like we went over before. But when a woman can't do that, you understand that? It's gonna make that that man you know, it's gonna make him less strong. Then your household gonna be out of order because she's already out of order, and you know your household's not gonna be as strong as it could because the man not strong. And then it says, "Of the wicked, oh, it says of the of the woman came the beginning of sin." Talking about Eve, and through her we all die because remember sin is death, and Eve being the first vessel that sinned, right? She dis she uh, uh uh was into idolatry, right? She took her own ways above the Most High God. That's how we all die. And that's something that all women is into nowadays, idolatry, putting their emotions and their feelings over the most high God, right? And then it says, give the water no passage, neither a wicked woman liberty to get abroad. Meaning you have to tame your woman, right? You have to keep control of your woman, right? As a man, when your household is in order, right? In the world, they call it, you got to have your woman in check, right? You have to have your woman in check. You have to. If you don't, your house is out of order. It says, if she go not as thou wouldest have her, cut her off from thy flesh and give her a bill of divorce and let her go. Meaning, guess what? You can cut somebody off from your flesh. Nowadays, you understand that? By separating, you understand that? But you cannot, I repeat, you cannot divorce your wife except it be for adultery, fornication, according to 1 Corinthians 7, Romans 7, and Matthew 19. But at the end of the day, what you don't want is a damn wicked woman, man. You do not want a wicked woman that's going to run her mouth all damn day, never shut up, not know the ins and outs of a conversation to where as though you're like that old man trying to get up a sandy mountain that's not going to go nowhere, and you end up with that mindset like you'd rather dwell with a lion and a damn dragon. You understand that? To be a woman that's not that wicked woman, you got to keep your mind on the precepts, all right? And you have to learn how to overcome all of those lessons that you learned in the world on how to be independent and not to listen to your husband. As a woman, the chief lesson that you're going to have to learn is how to listen to your husband, right? That's something that you're going to be working on for the rest of your damn life, right? And getting better at it and getting better at it. The more you do that, the less problems you have, right? Yahweh Shah said, do X, Y, Z. If I was like, okay, boom, he said this, but remember, he said that back then. So, boom, we can do X, Y, I mean, if we can do damn ZYX, then we can do it this way, then we flip it out, and then it comes out good, boom. Everything is going to be out of order, the same way with the woman, right? If your husband said, do X, Y, Z, go ahead and do it. Elsewise, you try to do it backwards according to your own way. You understand that? It's going to be all out of order, right? And at the end of the day, it's beautiful when a man and woman can dwell together in unity, right? Being a man of understanding, dwelling with your wife, according to love, according to knowledge, according to wisdom and understanding. You understand that? These things go out way smoother. You understand that? All right, so having a royal family in these last days is much needed and much much needed, man, to build up our nation. And with that, shalom, mashallah, shalom, shalom. Yasha, come here. Come here. See, shalom. Shalom.